What's going on everybody, Josh here. Welcome back to another video. So the new iPhone SE was just announced by Apple and features the same A15 Bionic chip that we've been seeing in all of the iPhone 13s, which is definitely awesome to see in a budget smartphone. Now, if you're in the market for a new iPhone, but have a budget of sub 500, the new iPhone SE is a great choice for you. But as you can tell from the title of the video, we are comparing the iPhone 13 mini to the iPhone SE. You might be asking why in the first place I'm comparing these two iPhones. Well, they do share a pretty similar footprint as you can see by the size of the phones, but one of them does pack a few more features than the other one. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what those differences are and hopefully help you make a more informed decision. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, the iPhone 13 mini and the SE do look very different. The iPhone 13 mini follows the same design language we've been seeing from Apple with boxy flat edges and of course the front notch, while the iPhone SE is still living in 2017, essentially taking the shell from the iPhone 8. You'll find the same curved edges, huge forehead and chin, and of course the home button. Now I actually prefer the in-hand feel of the iPhone SE. Sort of reminds me of my iPhone X with the curved edges. Just feels really comfortable to hold and it doesn't dig into your pinky when you've got it like this. And yeah, it's a great size for one-handed use. However, I do have to say that I much prefer the boxy design and the look of the iPhone 13 mini. Something about it just feels very premium to look at and feel. Now taking a step back, you will notice that the iPhone SE and the mini do share a pretty similar footprint, with the SE being only slightly wider and taller than the 13 mini. The SE comes in at 144 grams, while the mini comes in at 141 grams. However, despite sharing similar footprints, the iPhone 13 mini does have a much larger screen at 5.4 inches as opposed to the 4.7 inches found on the iPhone SE. Now the mini is able to achieve a larger screen despite having a smaller footprint because it uses face ID instead of the touch ID found on the SE. While both of these methods of authentication are great and very secure, they do have their pros and cons that you should know about. For example, Face ID is awesome for using with gloves or if you have wet hands. Face ID I found is also helpful for when you've got your hands full, like when you're driving and you get a notification. With Face ID, all you have to do is look down at your phone and your phone will unlock and show you that notification. Whereas on the SE, you will have to put your finger on that home button. However, Face ID doesn't work at all angles, which is what Touch ID is especially great for. For Touch ID, it obviously doesn't matter where your face is because you can just get your finger and tap that home button. Touch ID is also awesome for when you're taking your phone out of your pocket or your purse and you just need to quickly unlock it because after doing it for hundreds of times, you should know where that button is. So by the time that you already have the phone coming out of your pocket, your finger is on that button and it's already unlocked. For me, I'd say the pros of Face ID definitely outweigh the cons and I definitely take Face ID any day of the week over Touch ID. Not to mention one of the biggest software hardware integration advantages is the gesture based UI. So instead of pressing the home button once to go home and twice to go in the app switcher, you just swipe. It's just so much more intuitive and it takes a little less effort to do versus pressing a button. And when you're doing this for hundreds of times a day, it definitely adds up. Now, one last thing I'll mention about the screen differences between these two is that the 13 mini has an OLED screen as opposed to the LCD on the SE. This means you'll get those inky blacks on the 13 mini and yeah, it's just a big difference for me. The 13 mini has a pixel density of 476 PPI, which is really, really high, and a max brightness of 800 nits while viewing standard dynamic range content. The SE also has a respectable 326 pixels per inch with a peak brightness of 625 nits. So not too far behind. Okay, another major difference between these two phones is the camera, or rather cameras on the iPhone 13 mini. On the SE, you do get a very good 12 megapixel F1.8 wide camera. On the mini, however, not only do you get the wide 12 megapixel at f1.6 as opposed to 1.8 on the SE, you also get an ultra wide camera, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. In the 13 mini, you also get a few more features such as night mode, which lets you take amazing low light photos, as well as for videos, you get cinematic mode, HDR 4K 60, and sensor shift optical image stabilization. Flipping it around on the selfie cam, you also get the 12 megapixel sensor as opposed to the seven on the SE. You also get cinematic mode, 4K recording, night mode, as well as animojis on the 13 mini again, none of which I feel like are huge deal breakers. And one of the last differences between these two phones is 
the battery life, and MagSafe, which I'm sad to not be seeing in the iPhone SE. Which brings me to today's sponsor, Pitaka. Okay, so you might be asking what this crazy contraption is on my desk, and this is the Pitaka MagEasy Slider. It's called the MagEasy Slider because A, it's MagSafe, so this is a power bank, it's 4,000 milliamp hours, and you can attach it to the back of your phone, yada yada, it starts charging. It's called Easy because it's easy, and it's called the slider because this power bank slides into the dock. And now you not only have a phone dock, which is charging your phone at the same time, but it also charges the power bank. So when you need your power bank, all you do is take out both devices and when you don't need the power bank, just take off your phone. Simple enough, right? Well, there's more. On the back is another charging pad for your AirPods. So now I'm charging my AirPods and my phone. And on the side, you can get an optional Apple Watch charger, which now you can charge three Apple devices at once. The whole thing rotates, so it's great for taking calls. Links are down below if you're interested, and yeah, let's get back to the video. All right, so back to battery life. On the SE, you get 10 hours of streamed video playback, while on the Mini, you get 13 hours. In terms of charging, they both have a lightning port and can fast charge up to 50% in 30 minutes. Both the SE and Mini have Qi wireless charging. However, only the Mini has MagSafe, which we demonstrated with the dock. In terms of performance, you're not gonna be finding a difference between these two phones because they all have the same chip that every iPhone has now, which is the A15 Bionic. All right, so to recap, we've covered the biggest differences between these two phones, which are the design, the screen, the authentication, the cameras, and battery life. Did I make it easier for you to decide or did I make it harder? Well, let me break it down for you. So first, let's talk about the price. 700 on the iPhone 13 mini for 128 gigabytes versus 429 for 64 gigabytes or 479 for 128 gigabytes on the SE. Now I'd say if you were already planning on upgrading to 128 gigabytes, that brings the difference down to around $200. Now if I were you and I were using my phone for taking a lot of photos, that ultra wide camera definitely comes in handy because it's such a unique perspective, great for capturing group photos or food photos or what have you. That larger screen on the 13 mini also makes it way better for consuming media like scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. Not to mention the more modern design, the OLED screen, and the brighter screen, I'd definitely save up a little more and get the 13 mini over the SE if that described you. However, if you're truly on a budget and you were already planning on going with a 64 gig, it would almost come to a $300 difference. And if $300 would mean a lot to you right now for other necessities, then the SE is definitely a great choice for you. It's got a solid display, a solid camera, and all the features that you could pretty much ask for in a phone. And it's gonna last you a long time with the A15 Bionic chip. Apple's gonna continuously support this phone. So I hope this video helped you out. If it did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing for future tech content. I also have an Instagram, at Joshua Chang, if you wanna follow me there for behind the scenes content or to connect with me. And with that said, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.